Good morning, everyone. Welcome to your morning coffee. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for joining me. So this is going to be your weekend edition. So we're going to cover uh, Friday today, the 16th, through Sunday the 18th. Um, and so it's going to be just a general energy reading for the weekend. It's not love or sign specific, and it is a general reading. So it's please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Yeah. Um, this doesn't have to resonate right now. Time is an illusion. Energy is fluid. So it could resonate later on in the weekend. It could resonate next weekend. It could resonate sometime in the week. It could have already happened for you. Yes. Just take it how it comes. However it resonates with you. Go with that. Uh, please do not force anything to resonate. Um, if it doesn't resonate with you, just let it go. Okay. Um, just a little bit of uh, info I want to throw out there. I am, it looks like I'm going to be taking a break from accepting personal readings for some time. Um, I'm needing, I'm needing some time to myself, some time to integrate, some time to rest. I, I have been jam packing my schedule since for months, for months. And it's between, you know, work and school and then this other this practice here uh, and I'm needing to take some time I'm not in the best place right now you know my emotions I'm going back and forth with a lot of different things that a lot of purging and stuff that's happening and I want to make sure that I'm in the best state when doing this kind of work for you guys so I'm not going to be taking any personal readings probably until January um, I will be you know finishing the ones that I have already scheduled but, and I will still continue to be doing readings for the channel, so I'll definitely be continuing with morning coffee. I am still looking to make happy hour happen. Um, I will be continuing with like the monthly readings and the special readings, what the spirit wants you to know, soulmate readings, what's the tea, uh, it's mission, ascension versus mission readings, which actually I don't think I've done this month. Anyway, um, I'm going to be taking a break from personal readings, just personal readings. Everything else for the channel is going to continue. Yeah. All right, cool. So also, um, just a heads up, I'm not really interacting with the comments right now. Thank you all so much for your love and your support and your suggestions. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of finding social interaction right now very overwhelming. Um, maybe even triggering in, in ways that um, I don't, are a little harsh on my end. Now, you know how I feel about, you all know how I feel about triggers, but it's becoming a lot. It's becoming really overwhelming. Um, I'm in this really reclusive energy right now where I really just don't want to interact with anyone. Um, and I, I can be the type of person to like lash out unnecessarily. I am a fire sign. I'm an Aries with a Leo rising, but I am trying my hardest to not do that. So <laughs> I'm pulling back a little bit just because I need some time and some space to myself. Um, th again, thank you all so much for the love and support. Um, I will not be interacting much with the comments. So if you leave me a comment um, with intentions of me answering and I don't answer, please don't take it personally. I'm just not diving into that right now. Please go ahead and, and, you know, use the comments to communicate among, amongst yourselves. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm not really going to be interacting much, if at all. Um, I'm probably going to try and not even read the comments right now just because, you know, often, and I didn't even realize it uh, before, but, you know, I often am taking on a lot of the energy that's there. And there's a lot of loving energy and supportive energy, and that's great. But then there's also some energy that's not so loving and supporting that's kind of heavy and whatever. And I'm just trying to protect myself right now because I'm going through a very major serious purge stage. And I just need to rest and recuperate, yeah, and recharge my batteries. So looking to come back um, in January, the latest. It may be earlier. I don't know. I will let you know. But for right now, um, private new private readings are not going to be taken probably until January. Okay? All right. So with all of that said and done, let's get started with the reading for the weekend. Yes? All right. 
Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for the weekend of September. Of September. Wow. No. <laughs> Excuse me. I don't even know why I said September. November. <laughs> November 16th through the 18th. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right. So some of us may be going through something, maybe healing from something, purging something, some energies that happened, something that happened back in September. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, September was... Anyway, uh, uh, Betsy did a reading, Betsy of Fearless Intuition. If you don't know her, check her out. She and I are very, very good friends. Um, but she did a reading, an energy reading for like the weekend yesterday, and which was spot on. I totally resonated with that one. But she did mention uh, Leo and Virgo season um, and how they were really extreme. They were really intense. A lot happened. And so now with um, 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 Mercury going retrograde through Sagittarius, we are kind of what, what Betsy was explaining in this video yesterday was that Ju uh, Mercury going retrograde through Sagittarius is a moment for us to really do a final purge on some things that went down during oh, 2018, um, specifically for a lot of us over some things that happened over Leo and Virgo season. Well, September is Virgo season. So like, like for me, yeah, there's definitely some things that went down during September during Virgo season that I'm actively purging right now um a lot to do with a lot of stuff that happened over 2018 that i'm actually i find myself kind of back in the energy of um and that's part of the reason why i'm having to you know take some time away because it's like i didn't expect to be in this i didn't expect to be going through a lot of this again and yet here we are um, so you might, some of you might be feeling that right now. I know I'm definitely feeling the effects of this full moon that's coming up in Gemini, um, on the 22nd. And I'm also starting to feel the effects of this Mercury retrograde through, through Sagittarius. Ooh. So yeah, I need a break. I'm sure a lot of you need a break. And if you do take it, just take it because you're better off taking that time now to do, to care for yourself so that you can be better in the future. Like for me, I need to take this time right now so that I can continue to be available to help people in the future. If I can't help myself, if, if I'm not here for myself, I can't be there for others. I say that I say that to people all the time. If you can't be there, if you can't be there for yourself, if you can't take care of yourself, then you can't be there to take care of others. Okay. So, I mean, this is definitely a self care weekend. Yeah. All right, guys. Not weekend. Well, yeah, another self-care weekend. But this is a self what I wanted to say was a self-care season. And it really might be a self-care weekend. Um, you know, we're in some pretty hermit-like energies right now. A lot of us are. So just take this time. You know, even Betsy was like, in this re in the reading she did yesterday, she was like, look, maybe not go out so much this weekend. I'm with it. I'm going to be staying cooped up in my apartment, all snuggled up. I mean, it did snow yesterday. It's cold as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just that kind of weather, at least for me in, in Brooklyn here, it's that kind of weather where it's like, I just want to stay in and like bake cookies and watch movies, do nothing, you know, that kind of thing. So there's that. So yeah, another self-care kind of weekend. I'm going to go ahead and announce that one. But let's see what officially we have. So this is the weekend edition. So I'm going to do two pulls, one for... Friday, Saturday, another for Saturday, Sunday. Again, these are energies. These are general energies. Energy is fluid. This doesn't have to resonate over the weekend. This is just, you know, because I do a daily reading, I'm going, I'm doing a reading for like the next three days. So that's why I'm doing like this, these two pulls to bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good. Yes. Doesn't have to resonate this weekend. Could have already happened. It may happen later on down the road. Just, this is just what spirit wants to talk to us about. So for the first half of the weekend, let's see what we have. Thank you so much. First half of the weekend here. Something flipped out. 
So we have the lovers. <laughs> okay. Underneath the deck is the six of wands. So I'm what I'm already getting, what I'm already getting for this is this is about the union within. Okay, this is the union of self. The lovers and the two of cups are very similar cards. The two of cups has is like the minor arcana of the lovers. And the two of cups for me has been all about union within. All right. So there is a lot of victory that's going to come from working on this balance. Okay. Working on this balance within the two of you. The two of you being the masculine and feminine within. But it could also, this could also be with someone that you are currently with. Okay. It doesn't have to be external. I'm sorry, it doesn't have to be internal. It can very well be external. But the main thing that I'm getting right now for many of us that I'm channeling for, especially those of us that have been keeping up with, you know, morning coffee and have been consistently resonating with it. The biggest thing I'm getting with, getting for this is, excuse me, loving yourself. Choosing to love yourself over, um, over giving to others. Okay. And when you do that, you... When you choose to do that, when you choose to be your own best friend, your own lover and all that, you have a victory here with the Six of Wands, okay? Let's see what else we have. We've got the Five of Swords. <laughs> wow, the Five of Pentacles. And the Queen of Swords. Look at that. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. So, Five of Swords and the Five of Pentacles. A lot of us are dealing, are still dealing with this. Jupiter, I'm sorry, not Jupiter. Well, Jupiter is in Sagittarius. I just heard that. Jupiter in Sagittarius. So that might have something to do with, it, it's a lucky time. Um, for me, Ju Sagittarius is in my fifth house, so Jupiter being in Sagittarius um, could bring luck with like relationships and stuff like that. But look, I would say look at um, where Jupiter is in Sagittarius. I'm sorry, where Sagittarius is, which house Sagittarius is in for you, and look into that because for some of us, Jupiter in Sagittarius is going to be significant. Okay. Um, but what I was gonna say is Mercury going into retrograde through Sagittarius, is bringing up all of this stuff again. Five of Swords and the Five of Pentacles. All of the the fighting, the, the shit-starting, the backstabbing, the one-upmanship, the lose-lose situations, the ego battles. It's bringing all of that back up. And it's bringing back that back up in order for us to find a greater sense of unity and love for ourselves within. This is a, this is a major time to forgive yourself for these things and cut all of this out with the Queen of Swords. Recognizing that what many of us are still kind of holding on to a lot of this stuff and we need to let it go. And with the energy of the Queen of Swords here, this is like, okay, what what doesn't serve me? What is adding to what is adding not only not only is this stuff coming up again for healing and purging, reassessment. But what is still in my life, says the Queen of Swords, that is continuously creating these two energies, the Five of Swords and the Five of Pentacles? How are you actively doing this to yourself, leaving yourself out in the cold, backstabbing yourself, one-upping yourself, like, like just keeping yourself in a lose-lose situation? I'm getting, I'm, I'm really getting an energy of needing to just... Remove yourself from anything that's too social in favor of loving you. Think of it as like if you were, now if you do have, if you are in a relationship with someone, you probably already have done this or you're probably going to do this. But think about it like this way. You have a boyfriend or a girlfriend and you two just like are in nesting mode and you just stay inside Netflix and chill all weekend, um, gorging on like all kinds of like your favorite foods and stuff like that, comfort foods, blah, 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 this, that, that kind of thing. But doing that with yourself, that is exactly what I plan on, <laughs> plan on doing this weekend. But that's, but it's not just that, okay? 
it's not just to do that to do that. It's to do that to cut, to, to heal, to cut out all of this stuff that no longer serves you, to finally separate yourself or remove or heal from these energies, five of swords, five of pentacles, okay? I mean, these, I swear to God, the five of swords and the five of pentacles are like besties. <laughs> besties, okay? Oh, I should have said this in the beginning, but if some of you, I, I know, uh, again, someone left in the, I, I, did, I did look at the comments, um, when I woke up at like two in the morning, but someone again said that they can't really hear me. I apologize for that. I'm working on it, but you know, I got started a little later today so I can speak a little louder, but um, I normally film these at six in the morning. So I have to be respectful to my roommates and my neighbors. So it's best if you can't hear without, um, if you're just using a laptop or you're just playing it from your phone, maybe put your phone in a glass or something that will amplify the sound or put in some earbuds. I'm working on getting a microphone. Many people suggested that I create a wish list. I'm working on doing that as well. Thank you for the suggestion. But if you can't hear, you know, maybe place play it on your phone, place it in a glass, a jar, a cup, or something which will amplify the sound, or put in some headphones, yeah? All right. Anyway, this right here is just, is just confirming that this is yet another self-care kind of weekend and I am not mad at it, y'all. <laughs> I am not mad at it. So we're gonna get some clarification here real quick and then I'm going to probably reset and get the pull for the second half of the weekend. And I think I'm gonna I think I'm just gonna leave the Oracle cards for the very end, okay? All right, so let's get some clarification. There is a song. Y'all know how much I love me some Allie X, but she has this song. It's not new, but it's called Old Habits Die Hard. And that's playing in my head right now. It was playing in my head when I woke up this morning. Um, old Habits Die Hard. I'm not going to sing it. I don't feel like singing right now. But go ahead and check it out. Because I feel like that's what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with the um, resurgence of things that we know we shouldn't be doing or we know is not healthy for us. We know is just a negative karmic cycle, potentially, and we just keep going back and back and back to it. That would be us putting ourselves in this Five of Swords, create generating this Five of Swords energy within ourselves, putting ourselves out in the cold, okay? And at this moment in time, space, and reality, and whatnot, we are actively dealing with that. We're cutting that shit out and saying, no more. That doesn't serve me anymore. And we're choosing ourselves. Okay, see, this is a prime example of how I often see the lovers. The lovers is a choice sometimes. And often, for me, the lovers is a choice of vice over virtue. Vice being choosing the will or the desires of others over your own, which would be the virtue, your own higher self, your own desires, your own well-being, your own happiness. Well, here you go. It's a self-care kind of weekend yet again, and we are choosing virtue over vice this time. Or or the, the advice is to choose virtue over vice. Should you do that? Should you take this time to hibernate, heal over this weekend? And this could extend. This could be, this really could extend. It doesn't have to be just this weekend. But I know for me personally, this is, th these energies are really getting deep right now. Like I was kind of in hermit mode before. I'm really in hermit mode now. Like I really just don't want to spend any time with anyone outside of my apartment. <laughs> like I'm going to, I can stay here and hang out with my roommates. You know, we really keep to ourselves anyway, but we interact with each other. I'm cool with that. But I don't want to go out. I don't want to get drinks. I don't want to party. I don't want to do this. I don't know. I want to stay in and I want to work on healing. And when you do that, ultimately you have a victory, six of wands, okay? Some of you might, and the, what else, the other channel message that I'm getting with the six of wands, some of you might look at you like, look. some people might look at you like you're being egoic, like you're being self-centered, like you're being selfish. Fuck that shit. Fuck it all to hell, okay? You hear how aggressive I'm getting right now. 
That's bullshit. Those are people that are gaslighting you, that are trying to make you feel bad for not giving to them anymore. And if they don't like it, they can do some un... They can do some things. But <laughs> I'm trying not to get too aggressive. They can, they, can, they can go elsewhere, basically. Because we're not doing this because we're, we're choosing to be selfish. We're doing this because we need to heal. All right? I'm going to get to the clarifiers now. Let's clarify the Five of Swords, please. Please clarify the Five of Swords. Thank you so much, Spirit. Thank you so much, Spirit. This, shh, the Six of Wands again. Okay, now, the Five of Swords energy... The Five of Swords energy for a lot of us, we were keeping ourselves in this energy because of pride and ego. It's almost as if we were too proud to kind of admit defeat and step down. And now the universe, the universal energies, it's almost like we're being forced to do this already now, okay? I'm going to pull one more. But this is where the pride of the ego is coming into play here. Okay, and so for some of you, for some of you, you didn't step down from this battle because people would have judged you, maybe. Would have called you a quitter. But now it's gotten to the point where it's like, no, screw that. I did what I needed to do. I tried my best. I did X, Y, and Z. This is not helping me. This is not help. This is hurting me. This is not, this is bad. I don't want to be a part of this anymore. And so you take your power back. Let's get one more pull here for the five of swords, please. Thank you so much, Spirit. Five of swords. Whoa. Okay. You see, I told you, I told you. Underneath the deck, you have the hanged man. Right? Hanged man. So this situation, whatever the five of swords was for you, for us, I do like to say us because we are a collective. We often go through a lot of the same things. But what was keeping you here was kind of wanting to see things differently. Maybe seeing, well, maybe if thing maybe if I hang out here, you know things will change. Well, I'm going to go ahead and say that things didn't change, all right? You have the Ace of Swords, and if things did change, they changed in a way where it's time for you to just be done with it and just walk on, move on, all right? You have the Ace of Swords. You have the Four of Pentacles. You have the Page of Wands, all right? So you walked on with pride and with ego, and you, you tried to make this a victory, but then the Enlightenment came with the Ace of Swords, and you were finally like, it's time to let this go. It's time to start something new. And when you do that, again, you get, you get a victory here with the Six of Wands, okay? Okay. Now, The five of pentacles here is very similar because it's, it's, it's this energy of leaving yourself out in the cold. All right. So what I'm going to do here, instead of clarifying the five of pentacles, because I feel like those energies are extremely similar. I want to clar clarify the queen of swords now. Clarify the queen of swords, please. Thank you so much. Clarify the queen of swords. The seven of wands. <laughs> the Knight of Pentacles and the Unknown. Underneath the deck is the Seven of Swords. So, Seven of Swords here. You have the Seven of Wands, and as I, this was clarifying the Queen of Swords, 
and the seven of wands is crossing the five of pentacles and the five of swords okay so this is you being def this is you defending yourself against all of this energy and it's not even like you are still in the battle and you're defending yourself it's with the queen of swords you have stepped out of the battle and you are like blocking this energy from entering your life again with the seven of swords and the unknown okay the seven of swords is underneath the deck here and you have the unknown this is a unique card to the deck this is saying it's time to move forward even though you may not know exactly what's going to happen you don't you can't necessarily see clearly right now you need to just move forward with an open mind okay and that's you, and you're moving forward here with the Knight of Pentacles slowly but surely. So it's not. It's, so it's almost like this moving into this weekend, um, and then you have more unknown with the Seven of Swords. The Seven of Swords doesn't always have to be about cheating, lying, backstabbing. It could just mean that some things are happening beneath the surface and in an unseen manner. Okay, and that's what's really going on here. Um, so you have two sevens. The sevens are numbers of change, of luck. Okay, even change, but luck. And what I'm getting here is that with this Queen of Swords energy, it's time to just move on from this, even though you don't necessarily know where you're going to next. I'm getting a very serendipitous energy with the Unknown card here. It's like the universe is saying to you, just trust us and separate yourself right now. Cut all of this shit out. Focus on healing yourself. Focus on being your own best friend, your own lover. You know, focus on you and healing and growing and expanding and allow us to work out all the details in the background. So take this time with the Knight of Pentacles. Take this time to do this right, to go to, to leave no stone unturned. Take as much time as you need to do what it is you need to do to heal. Okay? I mean, honestly, this is the perfect time for it. This is a perfect time for it. And I'm saying, I'm not saying to not, to completely like shun your friends and not see anybody. No, what I'm saying is do what it is that you need to do in order to heal. If you need to take some time away from people, do it. If there are certain people that you still want to see, see them. All right. But for now, you know, just take your time. Do the healing that you need to do, right? Okay. So I am... <laughs> There's the Five of Pentacles again. That flipped over while I was... While I was um, clarifying. So I'm going to take a second here. I'm just going to reset. And we're going to do a pull for the second half of the weekend, yeah? The Eight of Wands wants to come out. There could be some sort of communication. But also the Eight of Wands is... Uh, Mercury and Sagittarius energy. Swift movement. Very quickly. Very, very quickly. I feel like many of us may get over a major hump this weekend. Just because, you know, this is this is a fast movement. Yeah, look, death. Death just flipped out. Transformation. This could be a really quick transformation over the weekend. Or just over this next... I want to say I'm feeling like over this next week, this could be a major transformation. You have the Hermit and the Ten of Cups. All right, so definitely a reclusive weekend of time to reflect on what it is with your true Ten of Cups, what would be really quite fulfilling for you. I'm also getting an energy of clearing away the clutter that keeps you from achieving this Ten of Cups that you truly desire. Because with the Hermit, you are going within to find more of your inner light. So... And that's uh, and clearing away, clearing things away to allow that to shine. Yes. All right. Give me just a few more seconds here, guys. And then we're gonna get a pull for the second half of, uh, of the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oops. All right, that doesn't come here. I'll go here. Okay. All right, guys. So let's see what we have for the second half of the weekend. Yes? Thank you so much, Spirit. Okay. 
The Fool. My, my, my. A brand new beginning. And this really just, this feels like a brand new beginning in and of yourself. Oh. Okay. Underneath, oh, yes, 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 yes. Underneath the deck is the Ace of Cups. Self-love, y'all. You got the King of Cups, the Two of Wands, the Ten of Wands, and something is hidden. I'm going to get there in a second. So, what's going on here? Uh, we're dealing with masculine energy. King of Cups is Scorpio. Um, so, yes, we are still in... Wait. We are. We are still in Scorpio season in Western astrology. We don't go into Sagittarius season until later in the month. So, yes, we're still in Scorpio season. So, and as I was re uh, clearing out the energy from the clarifiers, death came out. That is more Scorpio energy. The, this is a transformation towards greater emotional maturity here with the King of Cups. And that is what came out yesterday. Now, because of that, there is a choice that needs to be made with the Two of Wands. Okay? With the Two of Wands. And there is a lot of burdens. There are a lot of burdens that are going to need to be released. And that choice comes from the emotional maturity of the situation that is generated here that allows you to <clears throat> focus on self-love, focus on what is true fulfillment for you, and to take action to make a choice to release some of these burdens. And then you have a, a, a brand new start. There's definitely, this is, this is definitely a reset type of energy here. The hidden aspect the Ace of Swords. I swear to God, guys, you can't make this shit up. So now this is, this doesn't have to be over this weekend, okay? This is, this is basically the universe saying to you, this is what's coming, all right? So this could be over the next month, over the next week. Um, it, it could be, you know, throughout the rest of Scorpio season. But as you take this time to rest, continuing the message from earlier, as you take this time to rest and to heal and to recuperate and to focus on self-love, to focus on emotional maturity, you gain the clarity to make this decision with the two Ace of Swords and the Two of Wands, to cut out the burdens with the Ten of Wands. And cutting all of that out allows you to have a new beginning with the fool. I'm seeing a new beginning, especially I'm seeing with the king of cups, I'm seeing a new beginning with your head held high, your head on your shoulders, firmly on your shoulders. You have a clear sense of self. You have a better sense of self, a greater sense of self-love. Let's get into the clarifiers here. I want to, I definitely want to start with the Ace of Swords. Because I'm getting, because this card did fall out of the deck face down. So it was somewhat of a hidden aspect. So this could either be you are finally starting to gain the clarity, you know, the Ace of Swords, the aha moment is coming. Or this is a continuation of the Seven of Swords energy in which you are starting to to see some things much clearer, but it's not like you're really making it all that known. You're like doing this in secret. Now that I've just exposed your secret. <laughs> I'm kidding. But it's really just an energy of, with it being kind of hidden, it's like not necessarily communicating about it. And like, I'm resonating with that. But if I've just exposed something for you, I haven't actually, I haven't really... And the universe just said, yes, you haven't, because you still don't know what people are coming to a realization of. And you probably won't know until it's too late. <laughs> so don't even worry about it. All right, one more shuffle. And then I would like to put some clarity on the Ace of Swords. Please speak. 
spirit. What is this aha moment? What is this clarity? Thank you so much, spirit. Thanks, swords. The eight of swords. My, my, my. The knight of pentacles again. All right. And that's that. Underneath the deck is the nine of cups. Okay. Well, that's quite beautiful. Nine of cups is underneath the deck, clarifying the ace of swords. We have the means to now cut yourselves, cut ourselves out of this mental prison with the eight of swords and to move forward. Okay. This is a continuation of the movement with the, that came out because the knight of pentacles came out with the queen of swords. So this is the queen of swords using her almighty sword to cut out the shit. For some of you, for those of you that identify mostly as the masculine energies, it's like, it's like you're growing up. The rise of the divine feminine and you having so much contact with the energies of the Queen of Swords lately, you have learned how to, many, some of you have learned how to take on that aspect and use it to serve your highest good. And this is not in an egotistical way. This is cutting, this is cutting out the Ten of Wands, cutting out the burdens, okay? And so now you're stepping up. And this is all in service of filling your cup filling your cup so that you have a full and true cup to offer to someone else if that's what you want with the nine of cups here. But all of this, what is, whatever is being cut out of your life right now, whatever burdens you are releasing yourself from and moving, slowly moving away from, slowly rebuilding from, is all in service of your own wish fulfillment. This could be, this doesn't, this is not just a relationship thing. This is your whole overall in your life. What is it you truly desire? What is it you truly wish for? What would be in service of your Ten of Cups? What would bring your Ten of Cups to you? Yes? All right. I would like to clarify the King of Cups, and then we're going to clarify the Ten of Wands, and then we're going to move on to the Oracle. Yeah? So please, Spirit, please clarify the King of Cups here. Okay. That's interesting. King of Cups, please, Spirit. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> the tower underneath the deck is the nine of swords the nine of swords energy this to me is feeling like um this is past this is energies that you've been in for some time okay as the king of cups the tower realizations aha moments especially with the king of uh, i'm sorry the, well yeah the king of swords too potentially but with the Ace of Swords, I meant to say. All right. Um, the Tower is also Mars energy. It's creative. So it's just as creative as it is destructive. Why? Because when you destroy something that no longer serves you, when you remove a longstanding structure, you are creating space for something new to be built. Okay. You've got the Three of Pentacles. Self-mastery. Up the motherfucking wazoo, y'all. <laughs> and then you have something that's crossing the King of Cups and the Two of Wands. So it's crossing this choice that is needing to be made, and it is the Five of Wands. Look at that. Look at that. Wait, hold on. Let me do it this way. I just want to see. I mean, it's sideways anyway, so there really is no reversal here. But what I'm getting here is... The Five of Wands energy, this is the peanut gallery. This is um, too many cooks in the, in the kitchen trying to stir the same pot. This is internal chaos or conflict. This is just chaos or conflict in general. It's not as bad as the Five of Swords, but remember, the Five of Swords did come out in the beginning of the reading. Okay, This is more about differing opinions, whether that be internally, externally, or the peanut gallery. People thinking that they know better for you, for your life, or people thinking that you don't know how to care for yourself or how to do for yourself or how to figure something out. Like, no shade or anything. I love you all, but like, and thank you for the suggestions, but what I was saying yesterday 
with the whole, like, I got to figure out how to send it to you. I know I can set up a P.O. box. <laughs> I know that, guys. All I was saying was that I just need to figure out how I want to do it. Do I want to set up a P.O. box? Do I just want to have it sent to um, an Amazon station around me or something like that? Like, I just need to figure out the logistics. Again, much love. I'm not trying to throw any shade or anything. It's just that that's what the Five of Wands energy is like, okay? Again, I love you all. Thank you for the suggestions. Thank you for the support. But at the same time, I kind of know how to do from a fail here. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's that energy. And with the King of Cups here, this is about standing up and being like, look, no, I can handle it. I know what I want. I know what I'm going after. And I really, unless, not to be rude, no shade, but the King of the King of Cups says, I know exactly what I want. And unless I come to you asking for your advice, please allow me to make my decisions for myself. Okay? And that is the aha moment. That is the service in service of the Ace of Cups here. That is the King, that I keep wanting to say King of Swords energy, but here, that is the, king, the the Ace of Swords, but we're talking about the King of Cups, so yeah. And it's funny because the King of Swords is going to be way more diplomatic than the Queen of Swords. The Queen of Swords doesn't want to hear shit from you. She's just going to cut that shit out. No ifs, ands, or buts. No arguments. No conversation. Really no even real reason why. I don't need to give you a reason why. This doesn't serve me. I'm cutting you out now. Bye. Whereas the King of Swords is like, all right, cool. Let me hear you out. And he'll be willing to actually, when he's, when he's balanced, when he's upright he'll be willing to have a conversation with you a logical conversation and say like okay well i'm going to do this o o operative word here is i'm going to do this here's why for x y and z reason no this is not for debate but i will take the time to, to tell you logically to map this out so maybe you can understand but i'm still going to do this way right so maybe that's why i keep saying the king of swords because that's what the energy of the king of cups is giving to me only He's coming from a place of self-love and emotional stability and understanding that he needs to do more to love himself. So it's almost like a, a cross between the King of Cups and the King of Swords, yes? So, with all that said, let's clarify these Ten of Wands here. Please, Spirit. Thank you so much. Ten of Wands, please, Spirit. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's the Eight of Wands again. There's the Eight of Wands. My, my, my. This is really interesting. Now, if you don't remember, the Eight of Wands, um, as I was doing the, sh the, the, the clearing shuffle between the two sets here with the clarifying deck, the Eight of Wands popped out once. I didn't mention it. And then it popped out again. So I mentioned it that time. And now it's here again. So this is, again, this is Mercury going retrograde through Sagittarius. Okay, the Eight of Wands is very much a Sagittarian energy. It's very swift moving. We have the Two of Swords, which ha which fell in reverse. Okay, over this, over the King of Cups. And that's a, that's a continuation of the Tower energy that's here. Because for a lot, for many of us, whoever was in the King of Cups energy, again, I'm sorry if I said King of Swords again, but whatever. Um, I guess I'm very much King of Swords right now anyway. Anyway, <laughs> whoever was in this King of Cups energy, whatever this King of Cups energy represents, there was a moment of being indecisive, of refusing to make a decision, of refusing to see the evidence or to see things clearly enough to make a decision. It may not have been refusal. It could have very well been you just were, were unable to see. It could have had a lot to do with Venus being in retrograde, which is going direct today, thank God. But there was some sort of inability to make a decision. Either you couldn't see clearly or you refused to see clearly. But now we have the clarity here. It's with the Ace of Swords. All right. We also have the Nine of Pentacles that has fallen out onto the Two of Wands. The Nine of Pentacles is in reverse. So what this is saying to me is this is like an, for a lot of us, there's some sort of ending of some sort of bachelor lifestyle. Okay. Um, 
also some of what I, this is pretty specific but in making some sort of decision some of some people i'm not saying i'm going to say i'm going to say it this way some of you may be pulling back any sort of abundance gifts whatever that you may have been giving to others okay because with the 9 of pentacles this is like a well deserved rewards just rewards in general abundance um and what I'm getting here is some of you are choosing to pull that back from others. I feel like some of you may have been just showering somebody with, showering someone or a group of people with like love, devotion, abundance, abundance of time, abundance of energy, that kind of thing. And now you're just pulling that back. Going reclusive, choosing yourself over others. Now, for others of you, there could be some sort of decision that is made, especially because this fell on the two of wands, that now gets you out of the single life. Right? We have, my, 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 we have the hermit here that has come out, <laughs> has come out and, and fallen on the Knight of Pentacles and the Eight of Swords on the Ace of Swords. Now keep in mind, everything that we're talking about here, the Two of Swords, the Nine of Pentacles, the Hermit, and these two other cards are all clarifications of the Ten of Wands, all right? The Ten of Wands being burdens that have been held. And I just want to... I just want to point out that the Ten of Wands does have this moon um, depicted on it. So a lot of this could have to do with the full moon in Gemini on the 22nd. Gemini is all about communication, travel, learning new things. Gemini is very much a page of swords, knight of swords energy. So we're really, so with the hermit here that has, and the hermit came out, didn't the Hermit come out in between sets with the Knight of Pentacles? It came out with something. Okay, but here it is again. The, and this Ace of Swords energy, this aha moment could come to some of you through this Hermit stage that you're going through. So you may not be in this energy of, and this could be why the Ace of Swords may have come out on uh, face down why it could be somewhat hidden from you because you don't really have, you may not have this clarity yet. You may not have this aha moment, but let me tell you, honey, you go into hermit mode and you focus on you, you focus on your own self-love and clearing up the five of swords and five of pentacles energies that came out in the beginning of the set. You damn sure may find that, that, uh, that ace of swords, that ace of swords, and you'll probably find it pretty quickly with the eight of wands that's underneath the deck here. All right. Last two cards we have, geez, look at that. The unknown came out again with the four of swords. And these fell over here. I'm gonna put, so I'm gonna put them on top of the 10 of wands here. It's time to rest, to take a mental rest and to dive into the unknown. Because for many of us, these burdens that, that are being illuminated here with the Ten of Wands, we don't even know half of them. Or at least we're not consciously aware of them. So now this is a time to become consciously aware of them. For many of us that don't want to be single anymore, myself included, we still are carrying a bunch of burdens and a bunch of baggage that is keeping us from Connecting, like truly connecting with someone. Missy explained it really well. Missy of um, Saltwater Heels Tarot. She was saying in one of her daily readings, she was like, why am I, why are me and my my partner or my, my, my guy not married yet? And she was saying, well, it's because I'm not quite ready for it. I might feel like I'm ready, but I'm still not quite there yet. We'll say I'm maybe like 90% there. Because I don't want to be like, say we're in the car, and I'm quoting Missy right now. Say I'm in, we're in the car driving together, driving together somewhere, and some song comes comes on that triggers me, and now all of a sudden I'm bawling, I'm I'm, I'm sobbing in the in the passenger seat, and he's like, "What's wrong?" And I'm like, "Oh, nothing." Well, it's, no, it's not nothing. I'm still healing from some aspect. I may be over the past. I may be um, move. I may have moved on, but there is still some residual stuff that's being healed. Well, what do you think we're doing this weekend, guys? And it doesn't have to be this weekend. Again, energy is fluid. Time is an illusion. This could be, this is probably, this may be for a lot of you. I feel like it's starting this weekend and it may continue out throughout the week. 
Yeah. So take the time to rest and to heal because the Four of Swords is about rest. It's also about healing. Healing, you know, the wounds before you jump back into battle. Taking a nap. Taking a time out. Use this time out to your advantage in order to get to under to, to, to uncover what is unknown. Right? All right, guys. Um, I think. Give me just a second. I'm gonna I'm gonna go get. I want some more coffee. <laughs> Hold on. I'll be right back. Okay. Cool. Also, my coffee was getting cold, so I, I didn't like that. Um, something wants to come out under the Ace of Cups. I want to talk about that. And then we're going to get into the Oracle. What's underneath the Ace of Cups? The Five of Swords again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's enough. I'm, staying, I'm, I'm stopping there. But you see, it's all... This is... A, in, in the, I, I can't help but ask the question... How are you putting yourself in this Five of Swords energy? Just like with the Five of Pentacles, how are you keeping yourself out in the cold? How are you being your own shit starter for your own life? How? Mm -hmm. Yes, honey. Okay, cool. So now we're going to get into the Oracle section here. We're going to go keep it cute with the Animal Spirit Guides. Best messages for this weekend, please. Animal spirits and spirit and universe. Thank you so much, everyone. All right, let's see what we've got here for you. Best messages, please. For this weekend. The golden egg. Ooh, camel. And one more. There we go. Ooh, yes. Vulture. Yeah. Oh, my God, I love seeing that. I'm reading them all right side up. I'm not doing reversal with these today. Oh my God, that can't be any more perfect. Vulture. Like, I love seeing that card right now. And you're going to understand. If you don't already, un if you don't know already, if you're not familiar with it, um, you're going to see. It's a beautiful card, especially with all of this energy that, oh my God, you guys, you can't make this stuff up. Okay, we're going to start with Camel. Camel, resourceful, independent, knows oneself. Well, gee, aren't we doing that this weekend? Getting to know ourselves even better with the Ace of Swords and the Hermit and the Tower and the King of Cups. Huh. And the Ace of Cups. Huh. Fancy that. <laughs> the camel can handle absolutely anything as it carries a wealth of nourishment within. This wondrous creature is self-reliant and handles challenge with ease. Even in the face of excess heat, judgment, or anger, the camel searches inside for the cool elixir of water to calm the situation. The camel represents the ultimate form of bringing opposites into balance, fire and water, and being responsible for one's own reactions. The camel is a wonderful traveler and is especially fond of trips to faraway lands. Ah, wow, that's beautiful. All right, next we have the golden egg. Message at the center of the heart, the unstruck sound. Within the golden egg lives a precious sound. Deep within that sound resides a message. The sound cannot be heard, nor the message discerned until we retreat from the noise of modern day life. The magical essence of the golden egg needs warmth, quiet, and time to unfold. No rushing, no pushing, or grasping. Find a place of deep and restful ease, perhaps through yoga, nidra, or meditation. If you do not yet have a meditation practice, take some time for introspection or contemplation. When the mind begins to settle and the breath is calm, ask the question that weighs heaviest on your heart, staying open to any response you hear. Engaging with the energy of the golden egg is an advanced practice. It requires becoming intimate with our very essence and comfortable with vulnerability. When a feeling of tenderness or gratitude arises deep within you, 
know that you are well on your way. Your chest may swell like you are seeing an old friend that's been away for a long, long time. Listen to the message that that that's, they've been waiting to tell you. The Golden Egg and the Fourth Chakra The subtle essence of the golden egg is nestled deep within the heart center at the fourth chakra. This chakra, called Anahata, is the home of the self or soul. By bringing the mind into this, into this center, we discover a portal to the most intimate and luminous space. It is said that our inner guide sits there in deep meditation, waiting for us. Anahata translates as the unstruck sound. The fourth chakra is the heart chakra. We're definitely doing a lot of heart healing right now. All of us. Alrighty, and finally we have a vulture. It's funny, you never think you'd be so excited to see something like the vulture, but the vulture is a beautiful, beautiful energy. Very helpful energy too. Vulture, guardian and purifier, essential for rebalance. The vulture is perhaps the most misunderstood creature of all. It's intri this intriguing bird balances our ecosystem and prevents the spread of disease. It does the dirty work that no one else wants to do and cleans up our messes. The vulture appears when there is a situation that needs to be purified or brought back into balance. Remember, the vulture is greatly undervalued. What you thought was a mistake or tragedy is a blessing in disguise. I know that's right. I know that's right. <laughs> All right, guys. So, Venus is no longer in retrograde. I'm trying to think, what do I want to do? I want to close this reading with Crystal Mandala today. That feels the best. Thank you so much, Spirit, Source, everyone. <laughs> All right, I'm laughing. I'm laughing because I just came up with the, the headline for the, <laughs> for the reading. And it's kind of funny. Okay, here we go, guys. Closing message, please, Spirit. Thank you so much for guiding us. Thank you so much for supporting us, for loving us. Closing message, please, Spirit. They're saying, give us a, give us a moment. We're trying to figure out the best thing to say. There it is. Ooh. That's it. That's all we need. Okay. We have... Card number 39, Goddess Sekhmet and Fire Agate. I come through, spirit, passion of the lion heart. We also have, yeah, card number 52, Goddess Durga and Hematite, Spear of the Guru Mother. And that Spear of the Guru Mother is very much like the Eight of Wands. Precision, swift movement, surety of course. We're going to start with 39, Passion of the Lion Heart. And Goddess Sekhmet is very much about destruction. She's very much a, uh, a tower energy here. All right? So here we go. We bring you the empowerment of Passion of the Lion Heart. Through passion, you will dedicate yourself with an intensity and discipline that may surprise you. Passion is love activated. It is every... I'm sorry... It is energy that moves from within and empowers you to act in the way in the world in ways you would not otherwise dare to even consider. Passion gives you strength, plugs you into the eternal energy of sacred fire, and generates the ability to accomplish tax, tasks you once may not have believed possible. With great passion, there can be great pain. The heart that loves wild and open is also the heart that can feel disappointment and doubt most keenly. The empowerment of the lion heart strengthens your heart to recover from any pain through the power of courage, commitment, and bold, loving devotion to what matters most to you. Good Lord, this is an amazing reading. Finally, we have card number 52, Spear of the Guru Mother. 
Guru mother. <laughs> oh, Lord. All right, here we go. We bring you the empowerment of spirit of the guru mother. Sometimes there is so much choice that we struggle to commit. It's often not an issue of unwillingness to make an effort, but concern that the choice might not be the right choice. We might pray to the universe to be shown what to do according to a wisdom greater than our own. Although our free will is always in place, we are able to accept a task divinely given or reject it. The universe answers every prayer. In your heart, you have been asking for guidance to be shown what you need to do in a particular situation or perhaps more generally in your life at this time. Oh, sorry, guys. You want to know the best way forward so your actions are in alignment with heaven. In response, you have now become the spear of the Guru Mother. The spear of the Guru Mother is the direct, focused, and clear task given to you by the fiercely compassionate Divine Feminine. The Guru Mother is the unconditionally loving guide who will protect your soul, keeping you on the straight and narrow, spiritually speaking, and ensure that your efforts bring you the best spiritual results and not lead you off onto a distracting and ultimately unnecessary tangent. This, the Oracle also comes to you with this understanding. If the divine gives you a task, you can handle it. Even if you are going to need to grow, you have it within to complete it successfully. When the universe gives you an opportunity or life situation to work through, it is giving you a vote of confidence. The Divine Mother says to you, here is my will. I'll empower you. Now go for it. If you want to take her advice, don't hesitate or doubt. Be as focused and forward moving as if you were the main, you were the spear that she had thrown with her almighty hand and flawless aim, heading straight towards the center of the target. All in all, guys, this is a really great reading. Really great. So there it is. Thank you guys for tuning in. I love you all so much. Have I hope you have a fantastic, fantastic weekend. Um, I will see you guys on Sunday for the weekly Twin Flame reading. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that live or not. I haven't really decided yet, but we'll see. Either way, I'm going to do it, um, whether it's live or recorded. We'll see. But I love you all. Please take care of yourselves. If you need to take this time and to go into hermit mode, please do it. Okay? But make it a healthy hermit mode. Like, do things for yourself. Don't just sit around and just do absolutely nothing. You know, work on yourself. Um, like Betsy said, if you if you haven't checked out Betsy's reading from um, yesterday, the energy check-in for the weekend, uh, I don't remember the title of it, but... If you haven't checked that out, hold on, let me see. Let me see if I can find it. But if you haven't checked that out, I would say go for it. It was incredibly informative for me. Uh, uh, but she also, she, that she suggests that this is a time of final inventory, okay? We're going, uh, Jupiter, I'm not Jupiter, Mercury going into Sagittarius, going retrograde into Sagittarius is about a final purge. And with this final purge, we have... Um, Time for a final inventory. So it's the weekend energy update for the 16th uh, through the 18th. Go ahead and check that out. I mean, it really resonated with me. It was a great reading. Um, very informative. All right. I love you all so much. Thank you for your support um, and for tuning in. I wish you all, I hope you have a great weekend. And I will see you guys soon. Yeah. I'll see you Sunday. And I'll also see you Monday for our next cup of morning coffee. Yeah. Take care. Mwah. Bye.